Hello everyone, it's nice to see you all again, 3D here again, and welcome back to today's build session for Destiny 2. I hope you're all keeping safe out there, no matter where you are in the world. In today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different this time. Today, we're going to be creating a rocket launcher build, something that I, and many others, didn't think would be a thing since, well, since rocket launchers suck in game at the moment. But this season has brought us a new mod called the Argon Ordnance mod that can allow us to buff our rocket launcher damage even more than ever before and may give players a reason to use them once again in endgame. With this new mod and a few tinkering around with debuffs and auto loading perks, we can create a new and promising DPS build that all classes can use and hopefully may give a reason for rocket launchers to be used again. Although, Bungie will have a very long way to go for buffing them to make them relevant again. So before we move into the video, if you have a build idea that you'd like to share or you come across something that is interesting to explore, then type it down in the comment section and I'll be sure to have a look at it later on. Now let's start off with the subclass that we'll be using which will be the Eternal of Hunger and the idea here is to combine it with the Oppressive Darkness mod so that we can enhance our grenades to be even more powerful than normal via the Hunger Perks uptime. Now the build will utilise grenades a lot, as many of you already know that rocket launchers aren't in a good place for damage, so supporting them through any means necessary is the key to making the rocket launcher build work. At the same time, the grenades won't be the ends to all means towards making the build perfect, it's just using the oppressive darkness mod as full potential can make any practical damage build work in the long run for everyone. Plus, Using the Devour perk helps keep our grenades up and going when things get rough and can help for ending content if you're someone who wants to bring a rocket launcher to a boss fight instead of a sword or grenade launcher, although many people may tell you to switch depending on the encounter you're playing. Now compared to Eternal of Chaos, Eternal of Hunger is an overall better subclass to pick for specialising in grenades and overall effectiveness for all contents both big and small. Eternal of Chaos does have a place. However, for us to do that we need to utilise the Chaos Accelerant perk to increase our damage more, but that's really all the class has going for it to make it feasible. That and the Cataclysm perk which to be honest is amazing at what it does but feels more usable in PvP. A few things to note, I was going to use the Controverse Hole to help amplify my grenades further and was going to combine that with the Eternal of Chaos, but I found that the Argon of Ordnance mod stacks. And once that the time is free is where it will prevail the most, which meant I had to lose the exotic. But I do think it's worth to swap for if you know exactly what you want to go for. For the grenades, the Vortex grenades are your friends and I don't think I need to go over why they are literally the most viable in terms of damage compared to others. Sadly, Bungie has not made any mentions in terms of buffing the others, so Vortex grenades will always be the best to pick. For weapons, I've decided to go for a setup that looks suitable for PvP more than PvE, as the synchronization I'm going for isn't something you'll see a lot of, or at all in PvE environments, as you want to focus on heavy hitting weapons instead. In this case here, I'm trying to utilise all my slots whether I have them equipped or not, and I'll show you what I mean. Within the primary slot, I've gone with the Whispering Slab Bow with Sympathetic Arsenal and Quick Draw. Nothing special in terms of stats, but the perk Sympathetic Arsenal is something I've wanted to explore quite a while since it was first introduced. And this perk here has the auto reloading ability for all your weapons that are stowed away after a final blow from the weapon. Now this comes up on the seasonal weapons only, but it has a much more better use on a bow which will have a quicker reload on the get go compared to using it on an AR for example. So what does this mean in short? Basically. Using this perk will technically provide all your weapons with auto loading holster, but only when you get a kill and reload with said weapon holding this perk. This means once I get a Godslayer perk up and running, I can dump all my ammo and secondary into one huge burst and then auto reload via the perk. This is a perk that I can see being really, really useful in Beyond Light, and perhaps even in a new raid. For our secondary, I'm using the Truth Teller Grenade Launcher with Demolitionist and Field Prep. I've decided that since I'm using the Eternal of Hunger for grenade usage, I might as well pair it with a weapon that offers me more grenades upon demand and that's where this weapon will come in. With the Demolitionist perk attached to the weapon, I can gain more as I go and while also utilising the Sympathetic Arsenal perk for auto reloading it, which for a grenade launcher is a big plus for saving reload time. Depending on the content, I may switch to using the Loaded Question Fusion Rifle instead 
if I'm going up against these smaller enemies that are more quick on their feet, and I am unable to land a hit on them through any other means. For Heavy, I've chosen to use the Twin Tail as Dr. Rocket Launcher for how well it pairs with the Argonan Ordnance mod compared to anything else. In fact, the Exotic is practically the only Exotic Rocket Launcher to work extremely well with the mod compared to all the others that are designed. This rocket launcher fires two rockets, one that suppresses and another that leaves burn damage, and is a rocket launcher that I'm surprised to see not get that much praise for its two knock-on effects against ultras or bosses, as it can easily clear a field and can, when done right, flick the two rockets into two different areas so you can hit two groups of enemies when aimed and execute correctly. But the main thing about the rocket launcher is how it works with the rocket launcher mod, and surprisingly it's the only rocket launcher that will provide the most amount of damage to you compared to using a standard legendary rocket launcher, which will use cluster bombs, tracking and impact casing. There's more to this that I can't explain in the video as it will be too long, but in short, try and get the twin tail rocket launcher if you can. If not, there's always better alternatives. For stats, as grenades are going to be implemented throughout the whole build, to help aid damage, I've decided to take the root or buff in this area into the 50s for a 59 second cooldown, and we don't need to add any more if you have a weapon that has the demolitionist perk. Of course, as the build will need quite a few oppressive darkness grenades to really make a rocket's impactful, I don't see anything wrong with increasing this area more to the 70 to 80 ranges for a 45 to 41 second cooldown, which benefit you a lot more for netting multiple hits onto your target, and making your rocket launcher do a lot more damage in the meantime. After you get this area bumped up, you're free to choose how you would like to go about focusing the rest of the stats, as you don't need to have any other specific stats to enhance the build further, except for your recovery and resilience. One area that's always good to focus on is your intelligence stats, since you're always going to be using your super one way or another. Or the melee stat is also a good area to focus in, as you're always going to be in close quarter fights, one way or another. For armor, you need to have this season or last season mod slot for the Charger of Light mods and use the Argon and Orders mod which is Solar Affinity. Except from that, you only need to have 3 Solar Affinity pieces for the Argon and Orders mod and the Charger of Light and the Pressure of Darkness mod can be any affinity you want, but ideally Solar will be a good fit for the Grenade Regen and Rocket Launcher Reserves, etc. Now, here are the mods we are going to be using, which I will go in a bit more depth afterwards, and everything here is very simple to get, whether you're new or old player. For your head, you'll need Rocket Launcher Ammo Finder and Argonan Ordnance Mod, Arm, Resilience and Argonan Ordnance Mod, Chest, Resilience and Argonan Ordnance Mod, Leg, Discipline and Taking Charge Mod, Bond, Concussive Dampener, Bomber and Oppressive Darkness Mod. As you can see with the mods being used, the Argonan Ordnance isn't a mod that many would consider great on its own accord, and that is due to its damage being offered and the damage rocket launchers do not being considered that entirely powerful compared to swords or grenade launchers. Back in year 1 of Destiny 2, rocket launchers were the most used item for endgame as no other heavy at the time provided the necessary amount of damage to the 1 or 2 phase moments against bosses and things like Sins of the Past Rocket Launcher was sought after for its damage and perk. Fast forward to where we are now, and the rockets aren't in a great place, they've been overlooked by faster and more lethal heavies that can provide a much higher DPS within their magazine compared to the rocket launchers one in the tube. So the real question now is how well does the Argonan Ordnance mod stack when being used? So first thing you know is that the mod stacks but only up to 3, and when you add a singular mod to your gear, it will provide a 20% buff when the perk is active, the same amount given if you use the high energy fire mod. Add on the second mod and you get a 10% buff. Add on the third, you then get a 5%, so overall you get a 35% damage buff. On paper, that's pretty alright in terms of damage, but depending on the rocket launcher you're using and perks, this may not be enough to damage most higher tier adds, but this is where the twin tail rocket launcher comes in. The weapon fires two rockets instead of one, plus suppression and solar burn damage, and actually makes the damage output the highest for all rocket launchers that can be used with the mod. Here's my numbers that I used against the ogre in the tribute hall. With no mods, explosion comes to around 40,850, and impact around 15,504. Now with the mod attached, explosion goes to about 55,148, and an impact around 17,574. Now compared to the standard rocket launcher, or the true rocket launcher with 3 in this magazine, you're getting the most out of the twin tail which can down ultras as shown with just 2 shots instead of 3 or 4. 
Combine this further with the sympathetic Arsenal perk for the auto reloading, if you can pull this off, and you have a build that is capable of being used in endgame, and I have found some success with it in Prophecy Dungeon for their last boss section. And that's as simple as you can get with the build. The Twin Tail is a great choice to pick for its damage and extra side effects, and making use of the Demolition's perk, a pest of darkness, and sympathetic arsenal with the build can overall make the mod just a bit more bearable to use. Now of course, there is one issue with the build that is most commonly coming from the mod, and that is the moment you activate the mod and you use it against target, you lose a charge of light, which to me, is the big turn off considering how limited rocket launchers are. Now if you have a rocket launcher with 2 or 3 in the magazine, then you can in theory use up only one charge of light, while still having one left over, thus not using all of your charge of light in one go. And for that, the best weapon to go for would be a rocket launcher with clown cartridge, or the true rocket launcher with 3 in this tube. Overall, the build when properly specced into has a place for players to use in all types of content, with a great amount of damage and explosive radius to boot. And the combo you can pull off with the build can allow you to endlessly have buff rockets at your disposal. The only sad thing to the build is that the rockets aren't in a great place in terms of DPS. So if you decide to go into a raid with a DPS heavy boss, you may want to rethink what is best to equip. Outside of that, the build is impressive at what it does and generally offers you the chance to mess about with rocket launchers again. Whether you want to try out a rocket launcher build from the get go, or if you've wanted to find a way to incorporate rocket launchers into your own loadout for any type of end game content. So that's the end of the video, now if you enjoyed the video then by all means do please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on twitter to keep up to date with destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, the link is always down below. But once again thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next one.